Hello, people of thermodynamics. Today, we are going to look at an additional two problems that focuses on the idea that activity and the non-ideal behavior of fluids uh, can be used as a lens to understand systems beyond just things that are, say, boiling or condensing and wondering what temperature that happened at and what the composition is. First, we're going to think about chemical process safety. And we're again going to think about the conditions under which a, a given material might be flammable. Remember, in general, to begin with anyway, before the flames get terribly hot, um, and while there isn't a additional oxidizer besides the oxygen and air present, it's usually the vapor phase of something that is burning, not the bulk liquid, or uh, often sometimes not even the, the bulk solid. And so uh, we could look at, for a pure component, what is the vapor pressure at a given temperature, and then compare that with the lower flammability or lower explosive limit and see if we expect the system to be in a safe range under a given set of conditions. This is also true for mixtures. And so we want to revisit this calculation uh, for mixtures. And remember, well, not remember, maybe you don't know this yet. Mixtures could be mixtures of things, all of which or most of which are flammable. Or mixtures could be something like water and ethanol, where only one of the components in the mixture is flammable. We can apply, in either case, because the mixture might be non-ideal, we can apply modified Reynolds law to understand what vapor composition is in equilibrium with our liquid under a given set of conditions. So remember, at this point, we're not necessarily saying, let's boil this liquid. We are saying, here is a liquid. It is perhaps at room temperature. What is the partial pressure of the vapor and what is the composition of that vapor? And is that in the flammable range? So if you have multiple flammable components, you would be summing up all of those mole fractions and comparing that to the lower flammability limit um, of the uh, various compounds. Okay, so you would want to calculate those separately in sum. Um, or if you only have one flammable uh, component in, for example, something mixed with water, uh, then you just look at what is the vapor phase mole fraction of that component. So you would take your modified Reynolds law and you would calculate PSAT at ambient temperature. You would use atmospheric pressure for your P. Uh, X would be what your uh, liquid mole fraction was. Y would be you're looking for under what conditions is the Y equal to the LFL. Uh, gamma is calculated using your favorite activity model. Uh, maybe you uh, want to use Margoules uh, for this example problem. And uh, PSAT, you're probably finding that with, uh, with Antoine and checking different temperatures. So let's figure out today your problem. Uh, if you have an ethanol and water mixture, what mole fraction in the liquid is going to be flammable at room temperature? And let's say room temperature is 25 degrees C, and let's say our atmospheric pressure is 1 atm. At what point do we have to start worrying um, about the flammability of a mixture? So that's your first problem. Um, please go ahead and use the Margoules coefficients from uh, earlier videos, or I'll perhaps remind you of them in class, so that we can solve this problem, taking into account the fact that this mixture is not ideal. Today, we have two problems of the day. Our second problem of the day hinges on this idea that uh, our two phases that might be in contact for equilibrium don't have to always be vapor and liquid. Okay, So even though Fi hat alpha equals Fi hat beta at equilibrium. Alpha and beta don't have to be vapor and liquid. They could actually be um, some other phases. Oh, and remember, it's activity of I in the mixture alpha also equals activity of I in the mixture beta. So alpha and beta could be a uh, vapor and a liquid. They could be a vapor and a solid. They could be um, a liquid and a solid or in fact, because we know liquid liquid equilibrium is something that happens, it could be between two liquids. 
So for example, imagine we have water and we have oil floating on top of it. Uh, these two things are two separate liquid phases. Uh, they are in contact and they are stable, so they can reach an equilibrium with each other. Uh, but it's not just, it's still multiple phases. Okay, so this uh, idea of equilibrium must apply. And usually when we think about liquid, liquid, and equilibrium, we're thinking of one of two things. One, how do we know that we have two liquid phases as opposed to just one liquid phase? I'll come back to that one. Or we are wondering about, I've got a chemical and I've dumped it in here with say the oil and the water. And I wonder where that chemical is going to go. Is it gonna be equally dissolved between the oil and the water or is it going to preferentially dissolve into one or the other of the two phases? So, uh, this, uh, this is useful, um, you have perhaps used it, when you did liquid-liquid extraction uh, in organic chemistry, you were using the fact that uh, some chemicals will preferentially move between two immiscible phases to remove them from one phase and kind of dump it into another. So here's an example a chemical that is uh, soluble at, to some extent in both oil and water. And you look at this and you say, wow, what the heck is that? That's vanillin, which is the main flavor note in vanilla. And uh, it is soluble in water. You've probably experienced that if you've, say, uh, uh, mixed vanillin into your, or vanilla into your cookies, but also it's soluble in oil. Um, and you could probably guess that by looking at its composition. It's got a bunch of oxygens, means it's a little bit polar, so it might like water, but then it's got that big old ring and all those carbons, so probably it likes oil too. So we might ask ourselves, where would this go between the oil and the water phase? I want to back up a moment and just say briefly, uh, the question of whether a liquid mixture will be two phases or stay as one phase uh, has to do with the concept of Gibbs excess energy and is kind of outside the scope of this level of this course. It is treated in your book somewhat, and it's the sort of thing that you'll want to be able to calculate uh, if you're a graduate student. So that's one of those above and beyond kind of ideas at the undergraduate level in this particular course. Which brings us to our second problem for today, the one that has to do with liquid-liquid equilibrium. Now, while it is true that both describing two liquids in equilibrium with each other and also describing a dissolved chemical that might be moving between those two liquids, that fugacity equals fugacity is true, it's just not convenient. And it's not convenient because uh, developing uh, expressions for the activity in the two different liquid phases um, requires a lot of background work that has not been done for a, a large number of chemicals. And also it's like difficult to use, right? Like we'd have big long expressions that we'd have to be solving here for each of those activities. So rather than using activity models, uh, quite often for practical applications, we tend to use something called the partition coefficient or a K factor. Um, you may have seen this before in separations class. You may have uh, noticed it in your textbook. So K, something that you can look up in a table that, that people have experimentally often determined, sometimes through models, but more often experimentally, is the ratio of the mole fractions between the two phases at equilibrium. And so let's just apply this idea. So going back to vanillin on the previous page, uh, a lot of work has been done with vanillin because it is a chemical of uh, commercial import. Um, so if we had some of that dissolved in water initially, and we brought that water into contact with an oil phase, what would be the equilibrium distribution of that vanillin between the water and the oil phase? What would that be? What would we expect? Well, I got to give you a little data so you can go ahead and work this out. Um, let's assume we're at 25 degrees C and a, um, 
a partition coefficient. And this log here, by the way, is log base 10. That's why I wrote it out as log, not uh, natural log. Uh, log oil water partition uh, is 1.19. So that means more will tend to go into oil uh, relative to the water. And this was something um, I pulled from the original literature citation uh, in the comments. And also, I'd be happy to uh, share a link to that paper if you would like it from the Journal of Chemical and Engineering Data. So what would be the composition in the oil if we start in the water with a mole fraction of 0 0.01? And by the way, that is a super high mole fraction uh, for vanillin. Um, that's, you're, you're operating way below that uh, with your commercial vanilla. But um, just for purposes of an illustration, assume we started with x in the water phase of 0 0.01. What would we expect at equilibrium in the oil phase? 